Welcome back. Here's an experiment I've been meaning to show you for a long time, and it's one of my favourites, and it goes under the name of the Cartesian Diver. So what I've got here is a plastic bottle full of water and a rubber bath toy floating in the top. And watch what happens when I give it a squeeze. And then when I release the pressure. It's quite unusual this, and so that will take some explaining. If you put some effort into making these, you can make them really rather sensitive. And here's one that really needs just the gentlest of pinches for the diver to sink. And you release, and back up he goes. What's fun is if you pinch very gently, you can control the rate of descent. Try and hold him there, and then let him go a bit further. And then release. And it's very difficult, or in fact almost impossible, to get it neutrally buoyant. But it's quite fun realising just how sensitive you can make these. So, time for an explanation of what happens when you squeeze the bottle and the diver goes down to the bottom. And you release the pressure and the diver goes back up again. The first thing you need to know is that the particles in a liquid are very close together and that makes most liquids pretty much incompressible. But in a gas, they're very spread out. So when you put a pressure on them, you push the particles closer together. Now inside my diver, I've got a bubble of air and that bubble of air will get compressed when I squeeze the water. The water will pass the pressure through to that gas and for the gas to be at the same pressure, it has to reduce in size. So the test tube or the diver fills with a bit more water, becomes more dense and then sinks. It's a property really explained by Archimedes principle. So, the Cartesian diver, named after Descartes, though all the evidence seems to point to the fact that um, he didn't invent this. In fact, it was done by someone else a little bit later. But still, it's a lovely little experiment, and it's a really good way of demonstrating two things. Firstly, that liquids are not compressible and pass the pressure through them very well, and that gases will change size when you crush them. They are compressible because the particles are much further apart. And it's this method that submarines use to go up or go down or try to stay neutrally buoyant. I suppose they're a really big example of a Cartesian diver. So before we finish, let's do something that I don't usually see demonstrated at all. This is what I call the reverse Cartesian diver. I've got the uh, bottle of water here and my diver sitting at the bottom. And what I'm going to do instead this time, instead of squeezing it, is just release the cap a little bit and watch what happens to the diver. And then I'm just going to screw the cap back down again. So that's the reverse Cartesian diver. So I hope you enjoyed that experiment and I look forward to seeing you again next time.